Welcome to ihnani.com. This is the third video of Computer Fundamentals, Part 2. Level 1. Computer Internals. In this video, I will continue with the CPU socket and other connectors and components that are housed in a motherboard. CPU Socket A CPU socket or CPU slot is a mechanical component that provides mechanical and electrical connections between a CPU and a motherboard. In this picture you can see how it has been fitted into a motherboard. Although several types of socket exists, but only two of them are really used. The pen grid array, PGA, and the land grid array, LGA. In this picture you can see a typical PGA type CPU and socket with 321 pins. With the type PGA, the CPU will have pins to fit in the socket holes. In this picture you can see a typical LGA type CPU with socket. With LGA, the CPU will not have pins as in the PGA type, but will just sit on the socket. CPU socket comes with a socket cover and a metal lever or latch as you can see in this picture. Once we place the CPU on the socket properly, we need to close the CPU socket cover and latch the lock arm back in place. This secures the CPU to the socket. Here you can see a view of the processor properly placed into the CPU socket with its cover closed and the latch locked properly. Most CPU sockets are designed to support the installation of a heatsink. This picture shows a typical heatsink. The CPU socket must be able to protect the CPU from the weight of the heatsink, often very heavy in weight relative to the CPU particularly during the installation and removal, while also ensuring that the heatsink makes good thermal contact with the CPU. Usually heatsink comes attached with a CPU fan and are part of a package when you buy a CPU. This picture shows a typical heatsink and a CPU fan. Fan, sits on top of the CPU heatsink, to provide, added cooling to the CPU. The job of the CPU fan, is to keep the heatsink cool, by either sucking out the hot air around the heatsink, or, blowing air to the heatsink. This picture shows a properly mounted CPU with heatsink and fan. The wire is attached to the power socket to get power for the fan. Processor Fan Header this is where the processor fan power connector is plugged in to provide power to the processor fan. Memory slots. Memory slots, also called memory banks, houses the computer's primary memory or M. In this picture you can see DDR3 slots with four banks supporting dual channel technology. Ranging from two to four banks, you will come across single dual, triple and flex channel technologies, each, having its own, advantages, and disadvantages. Each memory bank, can receive a RAM module, designed for a specific PC motherboard. Power Connector One of the most important connections, in the PC, is that between, the power supply, and the motherboard. It is through this connection, that the various voltages, as required by the devices on the motherboard, and other signals are sent. There are two main power connector types. The 20 pins plus 4 pins type, wherein there will be two separate connectors on the same motherboard, and the 24 pins type connector. In this picture, you can see a 24 pins type connector, with two rows and each row having 12 pins. The connections are to be perfect. Any wrong connections can lead either to computer not working, or even burning up the devices on the motherboard. Serial ATA Connectors Serial ATA, or SATA, or Serial Advanced Technology Attachment, 
is a computer bus interface for connecting mass storage devices, such as hard disk drives and optical drives. In this picture, you can see the board containing six SATA connectors, four black SATA connectors for internal storage, while two red ESATA for external storage. In this picture, you can see the connectors for SATA interface on the left. Now compare this with the ESATA connector interface on the right, you can see the difference between them. ESATA provides a variant of SATA, meant for external connectivity. It has revised electrical requirements in addition to incompatible cables and connectors. SATA host adapters and devices communicate via a high-speed serial cable over two pairs of conductors. Almost all modern computer motherboards support SATA interfaces. It is faster than the ATA, a technology used widely before SATA. However SATA connector can be attached to only one device. The SATA-1, named SATA-150, offers a bandwidth of 1.5 gigabits. In comparison with the ATA-133, it was a slight advantage. The first SATA generation was more used for its features than its bandwidth. Then came the SATA-2 called SATA-300, which is the new generation working at the rate of 3 gigabits. It is more than twice than the ATA rate. With a frequency like this, you can finally feel the difference between the two technologies. The SATA-3 is on the way, and will offer a bandwidth of 6 gigabits. The ability of using more than one drives by cables should appear on the third generation. In case of an ESATA interface, we can have extension cables to provide an interface, either through the back or front panel to easily connect external devices. Serial port header, serial port header, is for a serial port. It is used to connect the serial port module cable to this connector then install the module to a slot opening at the rear of the system chassis. In this picture, you can see a serial port header. Serial ports have been one of the most basic external interfaces, connecting many devices to a computer, for more than two decades now. Today, most of the computers have at least one serial port, though, new devices are moving in favor of USB. In the internal picture, you can see a serial port extension module that can be fitted to a slot opening at the rear of the system chassis and the other end of the cable with black connector, which will be plugged into the serial port header to provide a serial port extension to the computer. A serial port serializes data. That is, it transports one bit at a time from a byte, and, because of this, it requires only one wire to transmit the entire byte. But, this also makes it slower to transmit, since it has to do eight trips. Before each byte of data is transmitted, a serial port sends a start bit, which is a single bit with a value of zero. After each byte of data, it sends a stop bit to signal that the byte is complete. It may also send a parity bit. Serial ports, also called communication or COM ports, are bidirectional, which allows each device to receive and transmit data. Serial devices use different pins to receive and transmit data, in which information can travel in both directions at once. Serial ports rely on a special controller chip, the Universal Asynchronous Receiver Transmitter, in short UART to function properly. The UART chip takes the parallel output of the computer's system bus and transforms it into serial form for transmission through the serial port. Most serial ports on personal computers conform to the RS-232C or RS-422 standards. Parallel Port Header 
parallel port header is a connector for parallel ports module. In this picture you can see a parallel port header. A parallel port is a type of interface for connecting various peripherals. Parallel port uses a 25-pin DB25 connector. Unlike serial port, when a PC sends data to a device using a parallel port, it sends 8 bits of data, that is, 1 byte, at a time. These 8 bits are transmitted parallel to each other. The standard parallel port is capable of sending 50 to 100 kilobytes of data per second. In the internal picture, you can see an parallel port extension module that can be fitted to a slot opening at the rear of the system chassis and the other end of the cable with black connector, which will be plugged into the parallel port header to provide a parallel port extension to the computer. Most common device to use a parallel port is a printer, though most of the printers now also support USB interfaces. PCI Bus Add-in Card Connector PCI stands for Peripheral Component Interconnect. PCI Connector is a computer bus for attaching hardware devices in a computer. These devices can take either the form of an integrated circuit fitted onto the motherboard itself, called a planar device in the PCI specification, or an expansion card that fits into a slot. Despite the availability of faster interfaces such as PCI-X and PCI-Express, conventional PCI remains a very common interface. In this picture, you can see an example of a 32-bit 5-volt only PCI card. Typical PCI cards used in PCs include, network cards, sound cards, modems, extra ports such as USB or serial, TV tuner cards and disk controllers. Historically video cards were typically PCI devices but growing bandwidth requirements soon outgrew the capabilities of PCI. PCI video cards remain available for supporting extra monitors and upgrading PCs that do not have any AGP or PCI Express slots. This list does not mean that we have covered all the components in a motherboard. It only covers some of the common components present in a typical motherboard. To summarize it, all the components of a PC connect, directly or indirectly to the motherboard. Motherboards usually contain one or more CPUs, supporting integrated circuits, RAM, ROM and other necessary hardware. The CPU, RAM, and graphics card are mounted directly onto the motherboard. The CPU chip plugs into a processor socket. RAM plugs into memory sockets. Some motherboards have the video display adapter, sound and other peripherals integrated onto the motherboard, while others use expansion slots for graphics cards, sound card, network cards, or other input-output devices. Disk drives for mass storage are connected to the motherboard with a cable and to the power supply through another cable. Every device including external devices can be connected to a computer only through a motherboard connection. The keyboard, and the mouse, are external devices, plugged into the computer, through connectors on an input-output panel, on the back of the computer. The monitor is also connected to the input-output panel, either through an onboard port on the motherboard or a port on the graphics card. Expansion cards can be used to add additional hardware to the computer. For more details on motherboard, check out our tutorial on the same. In the next video of Computer Fundamentals Part 2 Level 1 I will continue with the CPU and other hardware components that are housed in a computer case. You can find a lot of free video tutorials, training materials, how-to videos and much much more at our site www.ignani.com. Check out the forum topic related to this tutorial on the site for all your questions.